Hey everybody, Blind Rob here, coming at you again once more here on Starting Out Solitary. This is week 230, I believe, and this week we're talking about hand fasting. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a little weird seeing me on Friday, or might even be Saturday, early Saturday when you see this, because I know I'll be recording this video late and posting it even later, sorry about that. That's just how today went, it ended up being... But uh, yeah, normally I am um, up until up until now I've been mostly subbing for Wednesday, but this is kind of an interesting change of pace. Anyway, um, I honestly don't know if I can talk too much about hand fasting simply because even though I um, I had one years ago, uh, <laughs> it was during a crazy year. And part of that year was kind of traumatic for me. Not not the hand fasting itself, but just uh, things that other things that happened that year was just kind of traumatic to the point that I kind of repressed a lot of what happened that year, uh, which kind of gets me into trouble on an, on occasion when I do need to remember things from that year. But anyway, um, so yeah, I um I got a hand fasting done in 2008 uh, with my now former wife. And um, actually, we got we uh, did both a hand fasting and did the civil service at the courthouse. The only reason we bothered with the civil um, service ceremony at the courthouse was because my family was not willing to attend the hand fasting ritual that we had done at the uh, the state park. And so. Uh, I mean, I was, my relationship with my family was kind of rocky that year anyway, so, you know, I had no problem, you know, doing the uh, courthouse uh, service, you know, to kind of please them, um, especially since they were helping out with a lot of the other things that were going on, such as having the after ceremony uh, party at my house, um, excuse me. But yeah, um, I personally find hand fasting ceremonies to be, I don't know, a lot more interesting, a lot more powerful, and a lot more beautiful than your traditional Christian wedding ceremony. I think part of it is because it's very, uh, hand fastings are very pagan in its uh, essence, um, regardless of what tradition you're coming from or what culture, what folk culture it comes from. Um, I find them to be very powerful, both from the one that I had as well as some of the ones that I've attended, you know, over the years. Um, and um, yeah, I, I just find them to be more powerful as, as far as like, I, I th and I think part of it is because the, it is very much a ritual. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> so some things that I, can, I do remember, if I had to give any kind of advice for, you know, if, you, if for someone who is wanting to get a hand fasting done, that they should keep in mind, is first and foremost, find a good uh, celebrant or uh, uh, cleric or clergy to do it for you. Uh, one of the main problems that we had, that I had um, when, um, when I was uh, getting it done back in 2008, was the only pagan clergy, clergy that, um, at that time at least, in the state of West Virginia, or at least that I could find, um, was Wiccan. And as you all probably know, if you've uh, watched me either on here or on my own personal uh, channel, uh, current channel, or any of my uh, previous channels over the years, I'm not Wiccan. I, I'm not Wiccan in the most remote sense of it by any stretch of the imagination um and so uh there were times where the priestess that we had to do our hand fasting and uh us you know butting heads over aspects or details of the ceremony that we're planning simply because um she was wanting certain things to, to be very wicked in nature which was kind of weird because when we had hired her uh we did it and she agreed um that she was going to do it f in a very druidic 
um, order of bards of eights and druids style um, kind of way, which uh, I was a member of Obod back then. I actually am still a member of Obod now. Uh, the main difference is, is that back then I was just getting started in Celtic spirituality in general and Druidry, Neo Druidry, especially the version Neo Druidry, Druidry that is uh, done by Order of Bards of Ace and Druids was very much the primary form of my spirituality then. Uh, now, um, years later, it's something that I technically still practice, but it's uh, by no means the primary form of how I uh, go about pr uh, practicing my spirituality. Um, but I won't go there because that's not really the topic at hand. But <laughs> uh, back in those days, you could find certain rituals, uh, Obod focus uh, formatted rituals on the web. I mean, yeah, even back then they were very hush hush about you know, what you could share in, in a public sense about their stuff, but um, it was a little less rigid than it is now these days, I've found. And um, I was able to get my hands on a um, one, one of their rituals for a hand fasting ceremony. We wrote it to a certain extent, focusing on uh, Bridget, which is uh, my goddess. Uh, Matron goddess and I, I have to say even though we had headaches uh, dealing with the fact that um, the priestess that we hired for the um, for the hand fasting where we were planning gave us <laughs> a little bit of problems as far as the formatting and the setup and the you know the ritual and whatnot one thing that went smoothly was the deities involved because um, we were honoring uh, Bridget Breach and uh, Ingus, Oinga, I can never pronounce his name correctly. I think it's uh, Ingus Makog. Um, which, looking back on it, I don't understand why I even bother incorporating Ingus Makog as far as honoring in the ceremony because he, I mean, he's a cool deity, don't get me wrong. I've had some interesting interactions with him in the past, but he's, he's, um, back then at that point in time, I was very much a Henotheanus. Um, as far as like only focusing on, you know, worshiping one deity, even though I'm a polytheist at heart and my practice has kind of gone full circle now these days, <laughs> back to that, you know, only focusing on one deity, even though I'm a polytheist at heart. Um, but it was just kind of interesting. And besides making sure that, you know, you're getting the right kind of cleric, the right kind of clergy, you know, to do the ritual that you want to do and make sure that they're willing to carry out the way that you'd like to have it done. Um, also make sure that you are uh, getting a, or that you're able to get the kind of right uh, cleric or clergy that is willing to honor the deity that you are wanting to honor in your service. And I say that because I have uh, participated in as a guest in hand fasting years after my own, where the cler the, the cleric that, or the priest, the priest, I honestly forget which, uh, they hired. When they hired them, they cl the, the cleric in question c claimed that they honor um, the particular deity that the person that the people that were getting married were wanting to uh, honor in their ceremony and it turns out that no that's that was not the case and the, yeah um communication failed epically in that situation but thankfully um the priestess that we hired uh was also a devotee of uh, bridget so that actually worked out very well um and another thing that i found is the, you know just like everything else in life location 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 um we had ours done in the st our local state park and where it was it was a very beautiful place but the spot we chose was pretty much out of the way like out in the middle of nowhere out in the boonies if you will and so at least one third of the people that we had invited did not show up never showed up because they got lost <laughs> um they 
had never been to that part of the state forest because um, the state forest of the county of my state that I live in is pretty big. Uh, it encompasses a large amount of space, a, a large amount of land. So basically by the time that they were finally able to get there, uh, the ceremony had already been done over with for about 30 minutes to an hour. The people who were there uh, went back to my place to celebrate uh, the after party. Um, so <laughs> location, keep that in mind because it's like on one hand, I understand that it's like, you know, a lot of pagans, polytheists very much want to have it in an outdoor space. And, and that's actually another thing that I think of like just thinking to myself uh, while, you know, working on recording this video, um, thinking about recording this video today. You know what would I have changed if I knew now if I if I knew then what I know now or if I ever if you know breach willing I ever find another person in my life that's special in the future that I would fall in love with um, we want to go through that kind of uh, ceremony again you know things that I would like to see such as more in a inside location only because my practice uh, now is very much hearth based home base um, when I had the my hand fasting done back in 2008 I was very much getting into Celtic spirituality in general and I was coming at it from a very neo druid perspective and I knew nothing about anything and so to me it's like well you gotta have this out in the grove you gotta have this out in nature and i mean if that's what you want if that's what you want to do that's that's perfectly fine <laughs> just keep in mind that the kind of location that you're looking for is always going to have its own problems to sort out and its own thing its own variables to take into consideration um when, if, to make sure that you want it to be successful for your guests showing up uh <laughs> um what other are some other pieces of advice that I can give to people who are wanting to, uh, who are planning on having hand fasting? Timing. Okay, so one of the things that, one of the mistakes that I made, although it was one of those kind of mistakes that could not have been um, dodged, so to speak, uh, <laughs> was normally, I okay, so I'm the kind of person that I tend to plan ahead. I plan ahead to the point that some people think it's it's ludicrous uh, unfortunately um, when we were planning our hand fasting back in 2008 uh, we actually had to hunt down find contact and hire the uh, the the priestess within a week of doing the ceremony and the reason for that was because my well, my now former wife uh, she is from another country and she was coming in so it was uh, pretty much having to wait until she figured out when her and her family could come in uh, at a certain time and then plan around that and pretty much we weren't they weren't able to figure out when they were gonna be able to come in um, until like the last minute so I didn't know until, <laughs> until you know I was told so I basically had like a week maybe a week and a half to pretty much get all the details ironed out it was a bit of a mess. It was a good mess, but it was still a mess. Um, so yeah, so keep in, keep keep timing into consideration. That you have enough time to contact the the people that inv that are involved that you want to um, that you that you want to officiate that the guests that you want to bring that we want to you know share such a beautiful special occasion with you and. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's all, really all the advice that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure there's other things, but like I said, 2008 as a whole was not my greatest year. It was actually one of the worst years of my life. I tend to try not to think about a lot of it to the point that the first half of it is basically a blank to me because that's how terrible and how traumatic it was for me. Uh for a number of reasons I will not get into but um yeah I mean uh, I guess in the nutshell 
regardless of the kind of ceremony that you're wanting to do as far as a hand fasting go, at the end of the day, it is just as powerful, just as special, just as beautiful, if not more so than, um, you know, any other kind of wedding ceremony from any other religion because it because it's of your faith it's uh it's you know it's of your belief system and at the end of the day as long as you're happy your partner is happy uh it's between you and your partner it's between uh, the two of you and or whoever else may be involved who knows um and the efficient or efficients uh, who are conducting the the ceremony, the ritual in of itself, and any deities, entities, being so on and so forth that are being honored as part of it. So yeah, I mean, as long as as all if everyone that matters the most are happy, then yeah, it's it's going to be a success. No matter no matter you know the mess or you know all of the the crazy details that may pop up. Because let me tell you, I. I had a lot of things that popped up that uh, could have gone wrong when um, I uh, went about preparing for mine, and in the end, it's it was it still turned out to be a very special, very powerful, very beautiful moment for me. And um, excuse me, my wife at the time. So, uh, for any of you out there listening to this video, and you might be thinking about. Um, tying the knot maybe literally maybe not so literally <laughs> you know since you know hand fasting um, I wish you the best uh, may, may bridge bless take care have a good evening